Hey friends, how's it going? I hope you're doing well. In this video, I wanted to share a little technique, a little strategy that's been working for me so well where powder foundation is concerned. And I'm not really talking about like the bare minerals, loose powder, um, mineral powder stuff. I've got a whole video about how to make that stuff go on full coverage. I do love pulling that in from time to time. Um, however, I don't always feel like it's the quickest thing. It can be a little fussy. It can take a little bit of commitment and steps, but you can really get a great result with it. But in this video, what I'm really referring to are my pressed powder foundations. And I've got a couple of them that I've just really turned out to like. But I think the catalyst for all this, what really got me going on it, was this particular brush. And this is another one that um, I got from BK Beauty. It's the 105. It's huge. This is Lisa J Makeup's brush brand. And there were a couple of newer ones recently. One I was talking about being great for liquid foundation. And I got this one. And and sometimes, like with really big brushes, I just am a little turned off. I like to have a little more control with my look and my application, and I feel like in brush sets, it's the bigger brush that ends up getting set aside and not used as much. But this, guys, it's the perfect brush for these pressed powder foundations. Um, it makes such quick work of the blending. It's just super soft, super dense, and a little oversized, and I think that's what makes the whole thing work. So if you're seeing this and thinking like, is there something else out there that's kind of like that? Do I need that exact one? Um, I, my mind does go to one from Tarte that is about this size, and I think it was marketed as being the brush to use with their Amazonian clay foundation. That's like a full coverage liquid foundation. Foundation. I know a lot of people love that brush. A lot of people might have that, but beyond that, there's not a lot that I can think of or that I see in my collection that I have that really mimics the size, the density, the softness, and the cut of this brush. Um, I do like how it's not really a blunt cut, but it tapers a little bit down the side. And I think whenever you're moving it around a different area of the face, you've got a little contour that you're trying to get into, you know, I think it helps to have the taper because that means blending can happen not just on this part of the brush, but going down into the side of the brush a little bit too. So the brush is key, and then a couple of my powder foundations are definitely key as well. I've been playing with so many of them because I've got a lot of things that call themselves powder foundations, or they definitely go on, you know, I know them to be a full coverage thing. But there are two for sure, one high-end and one drugstore that have worked the best. So I'm going to take you through in this video the whole little face part of the routine because I think every step is important, and it's not just about the powder foundations. Part of what makes this work, I think, is actually coming in with a really good coverage concealer first, and then you do a quick like psh, 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 of your powder foundation, and your coverage is done. As far as primer for this look, no, I'm not wearing anything special. I'm wearing my sort of primer slash moisturizer that um, always goes under my makeup, and it's the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. This really gives my skin a nice hydrated feel, and I think that might actually help everything sort of adhere a little bit better. That being said, I don't think that powder foundation will ever truly beat out a really good long-wearing liquid foundation like a Maybelline Superstay or like that L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear. I think these powder foundations can get me through my day, but those can potentially take me beyond as we learned in the labor and delivery video. But anyway, just starting with moisturized skin and then I'm taking one of my fullest coverage concealers. Um, another one that I really am loving right now is my Revolution Conceal and Hydrate. But probably even a little more coverage than that would be my e.l.f. Camo Concealer, a real tart shape tape dupe, and I've got this in medium sand. And so what I'm going to do is just give myself a couple little dots around here. I might use a little more than I used to because the circles have gotten a little darker than they used to be. Um, I'm up frequently in the night. Actually, I can't complain too much. Last night was really good. Um, two wake-ups, so good. I can't complain. And then I take my little blender here. This is actually a Real Techniques... Um, highlighter brush. I'll link to everything below, but I like the way this um, buffs in my concealer. So I've placed this concealer everywhere that I need really good coverage. And this is going to just work hand in hand with the powder foundation. I think they layer up so beautifully with one another. And the end result is a really nice coverage look that took hardly any time to do. I mean, it really is truly hard to argue with the coverage of this e.l.f. concealer. If you're really looking for the best coverage at the best value, that would be it. But if you need a little more hydration or moisturization, Revolution Conceal and Hydrate, I think is another 
fabulous option. Okay, so super easy there. The concealer is all blended. Now we're going to talk about my two favorite pressed powder foundations. The first one that I kind of uncovered my love for this brush with was the um, Bare Minerals Bare Pro. I wouldn't say I disliked this foundation before discovering that brush, but the brush I was trying to make work with it is the kind of brush I'm always sort of pairing with a pressed powder foundation. And I just realized, you know, it's not the best. Um, I had this core coverage brush here. It's retractable and it's kind of a blunt cut, pretty dense. And I would usually look at a brush like this and say, that's probably the best kind of brush for powder foundation. But somehow it just wasn't laying it down effectively enough. And I didn't feel like I was getting as good a coverage as I am with the larger brush. But again, this is called Bear Pro. I have it in the shade Silk 14. It says Performance Wear Powder Foundation. It's got a nice little magnetic closure there on the compact. And this is what that looks like. And they do give a sponge underneath. I'm not usually an applicator snob, but we've got a really good brush for this. Then my drugstore pick is this Milani Conceal and Perfect Powder. I have it in 03 Natural Light, and it says it's a shine proof powder. If you were familiar with Milani Multitasker, this feels a lot like that. It's super soft. It's a really great coverage. And yeah, these are definitely my top two pressed powder foundations. I've tried others in my collection, both drugstore and high end, but these are the ones that give like the most flawless looking coverage. So here's how I work with it with my brush. You don't want to take either of these powders and with this big brush like scrub or swirl in, just simply place it into the product like that. Okay, and then over any area where you've concealed or you really know you need the most coverage, just dab it. Okay, so just little dabs. I'm sort of semi setting my under eye a little bit here, but that's not really super important with that kind of concealer. But the areas where, like kind of center of the face, under eye, top of the cheek, where I really made an effort to conceal, I'm just dabbing. Okay, dabbing all around. And then I'm gonna pick up some more, again, just lightly pressing it into the product, and then I'm going to buff it in everywhere else on the skin. Pretty much just dabbing back in when I hit a different, like, plane of the face. So I just did this side, and then I'm going for some more. Buff it in over here, hello. <laughs> Get a little more around this chin and nose area. And we'll hit the forehead as well. And again, I think that having that moisturization underneath from the Bobbi Brown face base, um, not so much a silky smooth primer, I think that helps this cling a little better to the skin. And this brush, you can see how much surface area that's hitting. So I have very quickly and easily covered the whole face and I'm super satisfied with the coverage. And there are a few little things that I will do further that would make a person totally question the fact that powder foundation was used here because we're gonna come away looking really nice and radiant. But I adore this brush, this size of brush, the cut. Again, it's gotta be really dense, I think, to give you the coverage you want. Um, a lot of brushes this size might be not so densely packed, and I think that's really a major key for laying down the right amount of product. But the Milani, the Bear Pro, great, great stuff. And I'm not totally sure Lisa J may have intended this to be something that could work for liquid foundations, kind of like the way that Tarte one was. And I'm not saying it wouldn't work, but it seems just so ideal for the application of these powders and really just maximizing the coverage and getting the job done quickly. But moving on from that, what I would recommend is going with sort of a semi-luminous or satin finish bronzer. I'm using this Radiance Brick. I've kind of fallen into this one lately. It's from Rimmel and it's in the shade Medium and it has a little bit of a glowiness to it. So I go into this with my e.l.f. complexion brush and just liven up the face a little bit. It's not super dark. It's like a really forgiving, easy bronzer. But I just swirl it across all those shades that are in there and get it going across the forehead, hollows of the cheeks as well and going down the neck also. For my blush and actually my lip color as well, I'm using this little duo from NARS. I love these so much. You're getting a blush and like a tinted balm. And I really liked the balm that they put out quite a while back in the orgasm shade. And now they're pairing different ones with different blushes. So Torrid is the duo I'm using today. They've got the Dolce Vita one. And I just think they're amazing. I mean, these mini blushes are just like ample size. I love the color intensity in Torrid, which is a shade I really Really hadn't experimented with much. It's this really pretty corally pink, but I'd say pretty light on the coral end of that. Just like a bright warm pink. It's so pretty and it pairs beautifully with that balm. And I'm thinking those are going to make their way into a stocking stuffer video from me.
So I pop that on. I'll go ahead and do the lips so you can see here. This is kind of a peachy shade. And the texture of these balms, so nice. Just absolutely wonderful. They are minis, as you can see. You're getting a beautiful shine. So there's that, and then a really, really important part of the look, I think, when you're using powder foundations is to apply some highlight. It brings so much radiance to the skin, takes away an overly matte look that I do feel pretty prone to getting with that Milani. And so I've just got this little palette here. This is from Ofra. It's called the Ofra Glow Signature Palette, and I love going into this like light pinky shade right here. I think it's super, super brightening. Like, a little goes a really long way, but you see what I mean. It just makes your skin look so glowy. And if you're a real oily skin person, you know, maybe that's not the effect you're going for. Maybe you want to keep the matteness in your skin for as long as possible, so you might skip this, but I think it just really livens things up and just gives this freshness to the face. And then I might go to one of the deeper shades, like this sort of rose gold in the middle, and use a little bit of that up near the forehead. Just really, really lightly there. Go back to the pink and get the cupid's bow with that. And then the last complexion step, some kind of a mist. I really like this L'Oreal Shake and Glow Dew Mist because it does provide some added luminosity to everything. So just a few spritzes of this. And I feel like I've achieved this locked in, luminous, yet fully covered skin that was so easy to get with a pressed powder foundation. And it's been just the kind of product that's been sitting around in my stash, pretty much underused or just used as a supplementary product to um, different foundations that I just wanted to add more coverage to. And that's fine and all, but it's nice to know that I really feel like I've got the trick to making the most out of my different powder foundations. Maybe I should give this a go with my bare minerals, like loose mineral makeup and see how I like it, but it just really seems to be the answer for the pressed powders. So I'm going to finish my look and then I'll show you how it all came together. Here is our finished look. Um, all I did really was the eyes there and the eyebrows. And on my eyes, I just did a super simple look. I got this um, KKW and Mario, the artist in the Muse palette. I saw that he was doing this and I just thought everything Mario is involved with, I tend to really like. So I picked this up and I'm just wearing um, this shade on the lid and this in the Crease and that's it. Oh, I did dab a little bit of the darkest shade, just a little on the outer corner, and then I popped on some lashes today. Yes, feeling ambitious. I got on my um, Salon Perfect. It's the Britney Bear collab, and I've pretty much loved every lash in that collection. I've got to look up the style, but I'll put that below in the description. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this look and just the tips and tricks to go along with powder foundation. I do still love my liquid foundations, and I'll definitely still be bouncing around and using all kinds of things, but I feel like I've kind of unlocked a little trick with the addition of this brush. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!